Live from Ramsey Studios in Nashville, you're joining a conversation about who you are, what you were created to do, where you want to do it, and how you're going to get there. This is the Ken Coleman Show. I'm Ken. So excited to have you with us. It is all about you. Why? Because you were created to fill a unique role in this world, contributing through your work. Somebody out there needs you to be you. And so we're going to help you get clear. If you have no idea what that role is, well, you're in a good place. We're going to help you get clear. 844-747-2577 is the number. 844-747-2577. Coming up, we're going to get to your calls. We'll get to your questions uh, in the chat window right there next to the video window. And uh, I'm also going to teach you about how to construct a mental diet that will set you up for tremendous success. So all of that coming to you. But first, I want to get to an article. I love to share from time to time um, articles that essentially back up what I'm saying. (laughs) Not because I'm insecure, because I want you to know that I've done my homework. I take your eyes and ears very seriously, very seriously. So there's so many people out there that tell you what to do and what to think and how to act and all this kind of stuff. And you got to be very careful, including with me. Don't just assume that everything I say is right. You should do your homework. And so from time to time, I'm going to do your homework for you. Now, let me set up the context for this. We talk a lot about Talent, what you do best, and passion, what you love to do most. And, and so today we're going to talk about that, all right? And, and, and I want you to hear somebody who's done some research, John Jacobitz. I hope I'm saying that right. Very tough name to pronounce. But he writ, wrote an article for Harvard Business Review about why it's so hard for people to follow passion. And as we say here on the show, passion's not enough. Talent's not enough. You have to use what you do best, talent, to do what you love to do most. Passion, essentially work that makes your heart come alive. You care deeply about it. It's not just about feeling happy. You feel a sense of meaning and significance because of the work itself matters deeply to you. The results matter. So just want to pull out a couple things real quick here. Uh, The recent Deloitte survey, they surveyed 3,000 full-time U.S. workers And only 20% say they're truly passionate about their work. And uh, research that the article, excuse me, the author of the article uh, has done with his colleagues, they went deeper. Well, why is that the case? And one of the reasons is, and this is essentially the crux of the article, it's hard. But the reason it's so hard for folks to pursue work they care about is because they don't know how to do it. And so he highlights a couple things. Passion in the context of what we're talking about right here, it's not something you find, but something you develop. I agree with this. I agree with this because, as I say, every person is born with something they do best and things that they love most, meaning there's just intrinsically things in this world that tug at your heart, and the things that tug at your heart are different than what tugs at my heart. But I absolutely agree with the research here, and that's why I'm sharing it. This isn't some little new age idea I'm throwing at you, some self-help guru-ish make you feel good. This is real stuff. Research shows that what I'm telling you every day is absolutely true. You have something in you that I'm referring to as passion that can be developed. Um, the The other reason it's very difficult is it's, it's challenging. It takes time. And we as human beings just don't like to do things that take a while. We want it to happen right now. And then the third reason it's so difficult is sometimes passion leads people astray. This is absolutely true. This is why you don't follow your passion. you got to be in your sweet spot, the intersection of what you do best and what you love to do most. Because I could pursue basketball. I love basketball. I'm passionate about it. But I'm not good enough physically uh, to make a living playing the game of basketball. A couple other things. Research has shown that believing that passion is just one thing, fixed, can make people less likely to explore. I want to address this because I don't talk a lot about this, but it's absolutely true. Your passion can and should evolve, meaning my primary role is really not going to change that much. It's just where I perform that role, 
how I use those talents that I have to do work that makes me feel alive. That can grow and should grow. And as a result, the specific part of the work, where you do the work, and maybe the results will change. But if you fundamentally break it down, it still gets back to, I love doing this and here's why. But it can change, which is why I think a lot of people when they call on the show, they get locked up trying to come up with one word. One final thing I want to share from this, the German word for passion is Leidenschaft. I hope I'm saying that right. Uh, If I'm not, please forgive me. I, I don't speak German. But it translates to the ability to hardship. And I love that. The ability to hardship, meaning you're willing to put up with pain and persevere through things because you care so deeply about the results. So the combination, talent, and passion is the key, the sweet spot. That's why we teach what we teach. And in that sweet spot, multiple, multiple jobs and careers and paths to do work that you love. 844-747-2577 is the number. 844-747-2577 is the number to jump in. But before we get to your calls, we've got a great, great bundle right now at KenColeman.com. Three formats of my best-selling book, The Proximity Principle, for one price. You can get an autographed copy of The Proximity Principle, hard copy, plus the ebook for those of you who like to read books on a tablet, uh, and the audiobook, read to you by yours truly, all formats for $25. This is a savings of over $35. And uh, again, really proud of the book because it's going to give you the step-by-step process to get where you want to go. The climb up the mountain to your dream job is not this mythical journey. It's actually extremely doable. It's extremely gettable. And it's not as complex as you think. And I unveil the people and the places in the book that will help you. 844-747-2577 is the number. We go to the phones where Robert is on the line in Bakersfield, California. Robert, you're on the Ken Coleman Show. Hey, hi, Ken. How are you, Robert? I'm doing all right. Good. That's what I like to hear. What's going on today? Well, uh, I've I've been in my company for quite a few years. Um, In fact, longer than I've been anywhere else in my career. And I'm I'm looking for something in a different state. Um, I'm I really enjoy what I'm doing and the people that I work with, but uh, don't really. I, I don't think the environment here is going to be good good for business long term, and I'm mm-hmm. looking for something somewhere else. Okay. Um, I'm I'm really good at data analysis and problem solving, mm-hmm. and I'm passionate about helping other people. You know, make their make their jobs easier, mm-hmm. uh, which is what I'm doing now. Um, the challenge I'm facing is I, I don't, I don't really have any contacts outside of the immediate area. You know, I, I work with other IT professionals here in this area, but mm-hmm. I, you know, I don't know anybody out of, out of state. Well, first of all, that's not true. Making those relationships. Well, first of all, that's not true. I know that feels true to you and I'm not calling you a liar. I'm just simply saying you're not thinking through this properly. And I want to address that in a moment. We'll get to that in a moment. Because I think you you have contacts and connections that you're not even aware of right now. Uh, but first, uh, have you picked a state or are you just going, Ken, I'm looking at the map of the United States and I'll go anywhere? Or how specific of a place have you identified? Uh, well, I'd, I'd like something in the in the Midwest or maybe the South. All right. I, I have a few places I'm leaning toward that are uh, closer to family. Okay. Are you single, married? What's your status? Uh, I'm married and I have three kids. All right, and so the wife and three kids—they're all—they're bo- all on board with this. Dad, we're in. We'll go wherever. Midwest, Southeast, we don't care. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, well, the first thing you've got to do, and I know you know this, but let's just review this. You've got to be thinking through. Okay, um, which of these areas is going to be best? You know, you've got a couple states in mind, right? Yes. Okay, great. We don't need to go through all that. But when you're looking at those, you're going, okay, I'm going to run through all the pros and cons, and we're looking at school systems, we're looking at climate, we're looking at which family members that we're closest to if we were to go there, all that stuff. And you've done that, okay? But at the end of the Mm -hmm. day, all those things, to me, those are bonus items. Um, And so really, you need to be identifying um, opportunities 
to do the data analysis of the problem solving in that space because you really love that and you love being a part of a team. Um, and so there are a lot of roles right now in this job economy, a lot of jobs um, that that would be great for you. So now it's a function of let's just identify the companies that are hiring and offering positions that you're interested in. Let's just make that list. Now, once we uh -huh. have a real list, and I'm making this up, but you would say, okay, we're looking at Missouri, and uh, we're, it would be in this county is where the company is. So you got the surrounding counties that would be an option to live in. So you get specific here. Uh, we're also looking at Georgia. And again, I'm making this up, okay? Same yeah. deal, same exercise. And, and so now all of a sudden, when we've actually got a target, we got to have a target, Robert. When I was a kid, my dad used to say to me, son, the person who aims for nothing hits it every time, right? Mm -hmm. And so you understand that. So, so we've got to have a target. We've got to have an area where we say, okay, if, if all things being equal, I think I'm interested in this position at this company in this state, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so once we do that, now we reach out to everybody we know on Facebook, everybody we know on LinkedIn, right? You see where we're going here. And we're saying, look, mm -hmm. I'm interested in going to this company in this area uh, to those of you who know me well, and by the way, this is phone calls, this is emails, I mean, this is old college buddies, this is your second cousin who you've always had a great relationship with, you haven't seen them in two or three years, but they live in Georgia, whatever. But you are shaking the relationship tree. That's what you're doing. And you are saying, okay, I want to go here, I'm interested in going here, and uh, I'm asking one specific thing. Do you know anybody that works at this company? Or these companies uh, or do you know somebody who knows somebody because an indirect connection will work Robert and in this case it's gonna have to work but this is gonna take time and this is gonna take some diligence Robert this is not a quick fix now could happen fast for you once you take on the perspective of how many people you actually know and one more exercise how many people do you know as a close friend family member or a an acquaintance where you could say they know your name you know their name, and if you were to see each other in public, you'd stop and, and say something nice to each other. Give me a ballpark number. Uh, probably a good thousand. Okay. How many people do those a thousand people know? Collectively, if you take all thousand, one thousand of those people, and you think, how many people do they know? So all of a sudden, do you see how that becomes your true opportunity for connection? Mm -hmm. That's a game changer, isn't it? It is. It is. How about you taking some vacation days and maybe you take a family trip and you go down there and you connect with some people in those areas and you do some homework. So, again, I know what I'm saying is not, Robert, a quick fix, but I'm not in the quick fix business. I've never met anybody who uh, achieved something that they desire to achieve greatly that it happened overnight. And so this is the same situation for you. So you've got some narrowing down to do, and then you've got some focused asks. And it's like, hey, do you know somebody? And by the way, Madison, let's make sure Robert has my Get Hired Guides. He needs uh, certainly the first one, the resume. Let's get his resume looking the right way so it grabs people's attention so he can use the relationships that he needs because, folks, a resume is worthless without a relationship. So you you, you can have a, the, the Ken Coleman Show template, which is fantastic. It gets people's attention. But if you don't have that who I know section filled out right and somebody who's actually walking your resume in to the hiring manager, you're playing the lottery. And I don't like those odds. 844-747-2577. Don't forget, coming up, we're going to get to your questions in the chat room. So if you got a question that's popping up in the middle of a call or you've been watching the show for a while and you've got a simple, direct question that I can answer based on the information you give me, fire away. And we'll get to some of your questions here in just moments. 844-747-2577, the number. Christina's on the line in Carson City, Nevada. Christina, you're on the Ken Coleman Show. Hi, how are you? I am living the dream, Christina. How are you? I'm fantastic. Good. Um, so I wanted to give a call. I just found you about a week ago from my dad. Um, I've been in my current position for approximately or well, close to three years. Mm -hmm. uh, March will be my third year anniversary in this position. Um, for that duration, um, about 12 months, 12 months of that duration, I've been the only one in my office. The administrator, um, first administrator, quit three months into my 
hiring, mm-hmm. um, making me making it to the point that because we're such a small office, I had to do not only my job, but I had to learn the administrator's job. Um, we ended up hiring another administrator about seven months later. That administrator ended up retiring a short time after that. So where I'm at is I've been doing not only my job, which is basically administrative assistant, and also the administrator, which is the chief of our office. Um, I've been doing the job. They're looking at filling that position now. And due to doing this job and learning this position for over for approximately a year now, um, between the two time periods added, they won't consider me because of the fact that um, there is a ridiculous policy that if there's more than a certain number of steps between job duty um, pay scales, that it's over that. Um, I've asked that something to be looked at where I get compensated for the complete job that I'm doing, which they said they would, and it's turned out that they are not able to do that and they're not proceeding with anything. Mm. So my question is, is, am I being taken advantage of and should I start looking for new opportunities? Because I, I mean, I love the type of work I'm doing, mm-hmm. but I'm not willing to stay where I'm not being yeah. compensated and appreciated. Yeah. Well, it feels like to me, uh, Christina, that it's personal, not policy. Mm-hmm. I mean, excuse me, I, my, I, just, <laughs> I just reversed that. I just wrote it down on my moleskin. It's policy, not personal. Sorry, I said that the wrong way. Right. Uh, would you agree with that? Yes. Yeah, so, so now, now that's not going to change my advice. I think you need to be looking. I think the okay. time has come for you to, because the, the deal is, is they got this weird policy thing, and you've been doing the job, and you can do the job, but they got this weird policy. And in my mind, a policy is a policy. You know, right. I, I, I tell you, I, I'll tell you, Uh, you know, what I think of policy. Okay, I got a piece of paper in my hand. That's what I think. That's what I think of policy. And it feels like it was created, uh, you know, quite a few years ago, and it just hasn't been updated, so that's kind of where it feels. Right, so here's the deal. They're going, well, this is our policy, and it's really painting us in a corner, Christina. They're not even thinking. Right. Uh, So, but but I'm telling you that it's, it's policy, it's not personal. And, and so what I'm telling you is, is that don't get your feelings hurt, but this is poor leadership. I think they're not, I don't think they're exhibiting great leadership here and they're going to lose a great person. And that's their problem because you've identified that you actually want to do the work. You, you, yeah. You're ready. I love this office. I love this yeah, job. And it's... you're ready. Yeah. So here's the deal. Look for your promotion outside. So don't okay. quit. I want you to stay in the role right now. Keep a positive mindset. I know it's going to be hard, but just right. be grateful and say, it's a personal it's policy. It's stupid policy, but at least it's not personal. And so then I want you to just focus on being grateful because this job is funding your future. Okay. Right. And Which leads to the next question with yeah. the administrator leaving. How do, how exactly would I kind of word that, that I was, that I had to do the administrator's job? Cause I've had, a, I've had people tell me, leave that out. Don't say that. That sounds like you're trying to bad mouth. Up here. And I'm not, No. I'm just stating that because of, because of the absence of that position being filled, I had to step in yeah, and do it. That's a positive. Say, uh, I was asked to step up and into this position. That's positive. Okay. Right? Yeah. Oh, no, I, I think it is a positive. Other people have been telling me, oh, no, I'd leave that out. That's, that's just, you know, it's, I don't know if it's the environment in which they were, I, I guess. Makes they, no sense to me. Does it make any sense to you? No, it doesn't. No, you're bragging about it going, I just came from, I'm actually applying for this position because I've been doing this position for our company. And, um, and so we've got to, you know, and, and, just, and just that comes out in conversation. But I would just, however you're going to list that information, to me, that's a feather in your hat. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that's not a negative at all. And then when it comes up in conversation, you're just, you're just very purposeful not to throw anybody under the bus. And you're not. You're going, look, I had a person leave. It made sense. I mean, None of this is negative. In fact, it's all positive for you. And you can just say, well, they've got a policy, and so here's why I'm leaving. And okay. it, and so, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, I'm really excited I've for never you. been in this position before, so it's yeah. it's kind of, you know, being able to um, advance from within. Because I don't have any college education. Yeah. I went into the military, and so I, when I got this position, I was able to advance from within. And so I've learned a lot since being here. Yeah. So it's kind of a weird situation to be in because yeah. of never having to do this before. I didn't even, I don't even have a resume yet. So i got to create one of those. Oh, and, wait and, a second. Yeah. 
So you just started listening to me. Isn't that what you said? You only listened for about yeah. a week? Yeah, well, my dad actually listens to you, and he's like, you need oh, to listen to this because of what's going on with your job. And Way to go, Dad. Let me just say thank you to all the dads out there who are supporting the awesome Christinas of the world because Christina's a rock star. <laughs> so, Christina, hold on the line. Madison, the associate producer, is going to make sure that you have our resume guide. All of our Get Hired guides are at KenColeman.com. How to write the perfect resume, and it's actually a template, Christina, so it's going to help you stand out. So hang on for that. Also, how to win the interview. I prepare you for what questions you will be asked, plus questions that you need to ask to stand out. And then finally, the touch point timeline, how to follow up. So all of those for Christina and the rest of you that are watching uh, and listening, well, just go to KenColeman.com and get them. They're all free. 844 747 2577. That's the number. Coming up, we're going to get to the mental diet. That's right, the mental diet. What should your mental diet consist of for growth, personally and professionally? And then how do you assess your current mental diet so that you can change it? We're going to get to all of that coming up. Uh, but as I told you, we want to get to the chat room. This is a fun function here on YouTube. You're watching or you're listening, and then you kind of jump over here to the window and you can fire a question. So let's get to it. Uh, Chad types in here, would it be worth taking a pay cut to work closer to home? Would it be worth taking a pay cut to work closer to home? Um, I would be making 40K instead of 45K. Uh, and he's looking at a 45 minute commute now. Now it'd be eight minutes. Um, okay, so five thousand dollars. So here's what we do, Chad. Um, I don't know if it's worth it, but I'm going to tell you the exercise that I would go through that you need to go through, and then it will make it very apparent whether or not this is a good decision. Okay, because your emotions right now, you can tell just the way you typed it that your emotions are going. Ken, this is, I think this is worth it. I just need you to give me permission to do it. Hold on, because five thousand dollars. In your world, uh, when you're making uh, 45, that's a lot. That's a lot. That's not discretionary. So let's look at five thousand dollars, okay? And um, and you were to spread that over the 12 months, okay? So the really the best way to do this is get a pretty good idea uh, on what, and you can do this with not much difficulty. What your take home would be if you went from 45 to 40. So that's the real number. And you can get a ballpark idea on this with not much effort, okay? And so let's look at that. And so let's find out what the take-home difference is. Real dollars in your budget, what's the take-home difference if you were to drop to 40? Um, and then you've got to look at your current reality. If you're maxed out with debt um, uh, or other expenses, then you're going to have to make some changes because while the ride – goes from 45 minutes to eight minutes and all the nice things that come with that. If you're adding stress and worry and all the stuff that comes with that, because you've really made life way too tight, then it's not worth it. Okay. That's the exercise. Do a real, let's look at month to month. What's this going to do to our budget? Now, if you can absorb it, okay. Uh, then I think it's a no brainer. All right. Now, the other thing I would say is if you can't absorb it and you still want to do it, great. What are you going to do? We're going to cut, cut, cut. We're going to cut some expenses, some luxuries, maybe some conveniences, or we're going to go work another job, part-time job. We're going to do some stuff over the weekend, side hustle, something you've always wanted to do. You've got to make the adjustment. So uh, the question is not, is it worth it? The question is, can you do it? And what's the best way to do it? Uh, Maddie B writes in, I have another job opportunity, Ken, where I think I can move up more quickly than my current job. Should I leave my current job and take that chance? Yes. I don't see anything here that, that would lead me to believe that, that this isn't the right move. Um, it's all about the latter. And so if the, the new job opportunity is not just a ladder, but the right ladder, meaning it's strategic in taking an opportunity that allowed you to move up, absolutely do it. Absolutely do it. Uh, Jake writes in, how do I renegotiate my salary after being at a company for a while and being successful? Okay, uh, I don't like renegotiating here. I don't like the term negotiating because that it just implies a lot of tension. If you've been there for a while, Jake, uh, and I'm going to take you at face value that you have, then this is a growth plan. We want to sit down with a leader and go, hey, I've been here a while. feel like I've been successful. Do you agree with that? 
Oh, yeah, Jake, yeah, we do. We really like your value proposition. Great. I would love to talk to you about a very clear growth plan. Um, opportunities that you think uh, I could take to become better personally and professionally that make me more valuable here. Opportunities to take on more responsibility here. And, uh, and ultimately doing a good job in both of those areas of growing and delivering, if you will, uh, how I can see my compensation increase. Now, you see how that feels? There's nothing about that that feels renegotiation. That feels like, hey, you're my leader. I like being here. I want to do more. I want to grow. And I know that I need to get better in some areas. What are those areas? I'm willing to go do additional training, learning, blah, 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 blah. And as a result, I want more responsibility, greater responsibility to deliver better results, more important results, whatever it is. And then finally, obviously, I would love compensation attached to the measurables around this conversation. That's how you do that. Please, 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 folks, listen. Don't go in and ask for a raise. It just, it just, it just always feels weird, puts the leader in tension, create a growth plan. And by the way, if you're in a healthy environment, they're going to receive that well. If you're in an unhealthy environment, the leader is going to go, whoa, 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 whoa. I don't know. That's not healthy leadership. Because a healthy leader go, great, I'm so glad you came to talk about a growth plan. And yes, let's come up with a growth plan together that, uh, that, that meets the company's needs, your needs, and we all win. See, that's healthy leadership. They're not going to resist that. 844-747-2577 is the number for you to get involved. Ask at KenColeman.com is the email address. Uh, and speaking of email, we've got a great newsletter. Um, how many of you are dealing with Sunday scaries and then the Monday misery? Uh, you've got to shift your perspective if you're not where you want to be on Sunday nights and Monday mornings. You're just going to have to so that you can get through the week and you're not walking around like a zombie like 70% of Americans. So every other Monday, I send out an email newsletter. And uh, I'm really proud of it. It's got words of encouragement, practical advice, and free tools and resources. That's it. That's the menu. You like that menu? I mean, it's the happy hour menu. Give me what I want, Ken. It's not long. It's super short. Takes you about 30 seconds or less to scan to see, hey, I either need this encouragement, yep, uh, or uh, I need this practical advice, some tips on what to do, uh, or I, I need that free resource kit. That's what you're going to get. You can sign up and subscribe at kencoleman.com slash subscribe. kencoleman.com slash subscribe to get the email newsletter. All right, I've been telling you, about this mental diet. This mental diet, I'm super excited about this. I'm going to be talking a lot about the mental diet for the distant, distant future. Because I've been doing my own reading, my own research. And I want to talk to you briefly about the reticular activating system. You can look this up. This is, we know from neuroscience that the brain acts like a camera. It acts like a camera. And it takes pictures of what we're thinking about. So if I'm feeling down and depressed or negative thoughts, my brain is going to go find negative images, negative situations in my line of sight and confirm my thoughts, right? So if I'm feeling like a victim, it's going to go find situations like that. Did that, that, you see how that cashier treated you? <sighs> that was ridiculous. All you wanted to do was buy groceries. Why'd they have to treat you like garbage? Like you're less than, you know, this is what'll happen. Now, let me explain it. Uh, we know from research, they've done this multiple times. Uh, they've done research studies where they put uh, a group of people in a room and they told them that they were about ready to watch a video of an intramural basketball game, two teams playing basketball, 10 minute video. And what we want you to record during this video is how many times the ball has passed. doesn't matter which team passes it, total passes on the court. And so they played the video, and midway through the video, they put a guy in a gorilla costume who walks out onto the middle of the court and just stands there in the middle of the game for about 30 seconds and walks away. When they got done with the, the uh, video, they walked in the room, and they asked everybody to tell them how many times the ball had been passed. And ready for this? Then they asked them, 
How many of you saw the guy in the gorilla suit and only two or three people saw it? Why? This is the reticular activating system. We see what we're focused on. It affects everything that we see. What we think about and focus on affects our perspective. Some of you bought a car recently. How many of you driving home or driving around in the day, the following days, the week after you buy it, you see the car everywhere and you're like, huh, that car's everywhere. Why? That's the reticular activating system. What I focus on, my brain goes out and takes pictures. So I want to just briefly run through four areas of your mental diet. You know, like in an actual diet, you got your carbs, you got your proteins, you know, all the kind of stuff. So we're going to talk about the four areas of the mental diet. Very simple. Number one, it's what you read. What you read. What are you reading? Are you reading garbage? Are you reading silly romance novels? Are you reading tabloid stuff? Uh, are you reading negative news all the time? What are you reading? Number two, what are you watching? Uh-oh, now I'm stepping on some real toes. You know, are you watching The Bachelor with a bunch of drama all the time? People freaking out, acting unhealthy? Is that the kind of stuff you're filling your brain with? Now, again, I'm not saying you're wrong if you're watching these things, but I'm saying, what are you consuming? What are you putting in your mind? Number three, what are you listening to? Are you listening to podcasts that are challenging you? Are you listening to books on audio, audiobooks? Are you listening to uh, motivating things? Are you listening to positive things, things that are helping you? And by the way, this isn't just digital form. And that leads me to number four. Who are you hanging out with? See, if you're hanging out with negative people, guess what you're listening to all the time? Negative thoughts. I'm telling you, your whole perspective can change from walking out of a negative environment into a positive environment. You hear one thing, think one thing, and then you go to the other way and you go, what? Whoa, that's really different. That's really different. So what you read, what you watch, what you listen to, who you hang out with, this is how you are truly consuming information. And so that is your mental diet. So in order to change your mental diet, to change the way you see things, which is so important, you will not change the way you act, folks, until you change the way you think. And so to change the way you think, you better be changing what you are consuming. So if you're watching garbage, reading garbage, listening to garbage, hanging out with garbage thinkers, negative thinkers, I got news for you. You're not going to get different results. You change your mental diet, you'll change everything. Everything. It's that simple. So do some introspective work on that. I challenge you. Begin to make changes in your mental diet. 844-747-2577 is the number. We got to get one more call in here. Spokane, Washington is where we go next. Katie's on the line. Katie, you're on the Ken Coleman Show. Hi, Ken. Thanks so much for taking my call. I'm so excited to be talking with you. Well, I'm excited too. What's going on? Thank you. Um, you know, I've been working in an industry, specifically the lending industry, for the last four years now. And it is really, really wearing on me. It's convenient you're talking about the mental diet because, you know, my job is actually causing me a great deal of stress. It always has for mm -hmm. the last four years, but it's been really stable and mm -hmm. I've been able to find tremendous success in it. Yep. Um, and ultimately, I'm ready to pursue my actual passion. I have zero passion in this job. I stumbled upon it. And like mm -hmm. I said, the stability was really attractive. Yeah. But I'm at a point where I've known for the last four years what I want to pursue, but I just haven't done it. And I'm ready to do so. I'm just uncertain how to go about it. Okay. Knowing I'm a Dave Ramsey person, we're on yeah. baby step two. Okay. And I'm not financially in a position to cash flow college, which I think would be my next step. Okay, great. This is awesome. Let's go through this really quick. Uh, what is it that you want to do? Detail it for me. You know, I really would love to get into adult education. Adult education. Okay. So, Specifically, what does yeah. that mean? You know, I, I love the idea of, you know, being a counselor, being even a teacher, you know, maybe for like a high school age, you know, I 
love helping people and teaching people. I, it's a dream job to be a motivational speaker, actually, and to be an author. But ultimately, career-wise, right now, I want to pursue something that might be more within that, just a basic teaching realm or even corporate training realm. Okay, great. But those are two different things, okay? They and are. So, so, <laughs> let, so this is fun here. Um, I'm going to come back to that. Okay, we're going to press pause on that part of the conversation. And let's go to the baby step two thing, because this is a question we get a lot here. Obviously, I'm part of Ramsey Solutions, part of the whole network. Uh, Dave's my mentor. Uh, how much debt do you have left? And when do you think you're going to pay it off? You know, we have about 25000 left. Okay. And by staying true to our plan, we would be able to pay it off probably in about a year and a half to two years. That's awesome. Okay, let's just say two years to be moderate, okay? So okay. two years from now, you're out of debt. Um, there is no reason that you can't uh, begin to do some things to put you on the path. What's interesting is, is if you're going to be a teacher, do you have the necessary degree uh, college degree because you could teach with a with a college degree in high school you don't have to have a master's to my knowledge am I right you are right and no I do not I have no college education all right great so that's one so we would have to do that um, mm -hmm. and you and you can't cash flow that right now because everything's going into paying off the debt so we got a two-year uh, holding period if that's the play but doing the corporate training that's a whole different ball game um, right. a whole different ball game. In fact, that's going to come down to the proximity principle, which I teach religiously, and that's where that comes in, and a degree is not necessary. Even if they go, well, we'd like a degree, that's a bunch of nonsense in today's world because the job market is so hot. So let's just say in mm -hmm. Spokane, you got somebody who wants a corporate trainer, they want training in HR or whatever, and uh, they know you've got the chops, the talent to do it, and they can train you on some of the nuances. You know, I would not not apply to something like that if it even said, well, we we want you to have a college degree. I'd still apply. In fact, I'd use the Ken Coleman template. That'll really get your attention. And if you use the template plus you use the proximity principle and you get a relationship that's going, hey, let me tell you about Katie. She's a rock star. Then that path you can definitely take. Um, so I think what's left for you is to decide if you knew that there was no risk, you could not fail. And then you would absolutely love it. And it would put you in a position where eventually you write that book and eventually you speak. What would you choose tomorrow between the two? That's a hard question. No, and I, think I know the reason it's so hard for me is because I'm struggling with like my stress right now. Ultimately, what I would choose is to quit my job. No, no, <laughs> like I did. I know. But like the but, true thing to do. <laughs> well, but no, I know. I'm saying that's the little fun exercise. You do quit your job. Yeah. I give You quit your job today and you walk into one of uh -huh. these two paths tomorrow. You're doing it right away. What would you choose? Educating you know, high schoolers or would you want to be training, instructing adults? Probably training and instructing adults. Yeah, that's what I thought. One more fun yeah. question to confirm yeah. it. What would you write about tomorrow? Mm -hmm. If I guaranteed you your book would be a bestseller, what would you write about? You know, um, being able to overcome adversity, yes. dealing with childhood traumas and being able to be a successful and, you know, a adult, a contributing member to society for sure. Did you have childhood trauma? I did. Mm. Yeah. And it, and it still weighs on me quite a bit. So I know that there's a lot of deep rooted issues that oh. I'm still working through. And, have you, you thought, know, getting, have getting you thought about for. counseling? I have. Yeah. I, and that's another thing I, I really have thought about. I was just really concerned with the ability because I've been trying to do research and you know if I were to get into counseling I feel as though I'd have to go and get at minimum a four-year degree yeah. and just knowing that I don't think Spokane has that high of a market for mm -hmm. um, bachelor's degrees in the psychology realm yeah you know, but here's the deal to pursue more of a master's I get that but I think you and your hubs have got to sit down and have a long-range conversation because it's worth it if that's what your heart's telling you to do and I'm not saying it is I think you got three things to yeah. look at I think you look at um, the uh, training in a corporate, just being an all-around instructor, guide in a corporate setting, that could be HR, that could be something else. I think you need to look at mm -hmm. teaching high school education, and then I think you look at counseling. And I here's what I want you to do. I want you, uh, do you have a copy of my book, The Proximity Principle? I do not. Okay, you do today. I'm giving it to you right now, and here's what I want you to do. Madison's going to give you that. Here's what I want. I want you to read the book, and I want you to start hanging around specifically successful teachers, successful counselors, 
um, successful corporate trainers, HR. Here's what I want you to do. You hang out with them and you clarify what all's involved in the day to day, what all's involved to get where they are, all that good stuff. That's clarifying and verifying. That's the first part of the proximity principle. Let's just see what's involved. Your heart's going to tell you uh, out of those three things, one of those is what you want to do. So that's all you got to do. Well, folks, that music means our time's almost up. But before I let you go, you matter and you do have what it takes. Thanks so much for joining us. Until next time, this is The Ken Coleman Show. Press on. Press on.